yesterday at the spring festival, somebody gave me a hat to wear. This hat came from Tracy Patterson and Noreen Baruti. And the hat says on the top, it says, Pastor. And then underneath it says, Warning. Anything you say or do could be used in a sermon. <laughs> oh, I got a kick out of that. That was a lot of fun wearing that hat yesterday. Before the kids all threw pies in my face. That was a lot of fun too. Today is part two of a five-part sermon series called Questions of the faith. And each week we uncover a different question that appears in the assigned scripture verses. And today's question is very direct. Are all sins forgiven? Or more appropriately, maybe that question should be, are all sins forgivable? I'll say that again. Are all sins forgivable? And the knee-jerk reaction would be, well, yeah, of course all sins are forgivable. What, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I have come to save the sinners, not to condemn them. And Jesus told many stories in his teaching about forgiveness and reconciliation and new life. One of them was the famous story we call the prodigal son, where the son goes off and does whatever he wants to do. But then he comes to his senses and he repents of his ways, his selfish ways, and he goes back. And what does he do? He receives forgiveness when he comes back in repentance. And then there's the cross. The cross is a reminder of God's willing to forgive sins. The cross is all about forgiveness. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that we could be saved through him. And what were the first words that Jesus said from the cross? He was praying for forgiveness over those who were killing him. So yes, the posture of God is God wants to forgive us. God invites us to come and be forgiven. Forgiven is the posture and nature of God. Forgiveness is right there in the center of God's personality. But now the waters get muddied. Now I'm about to share something that makes us feel uncomfortable. And it comes right out of our gospel reading. This is what Jesus said. The words are on the monitor today. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Now wait, didn't we just say that God is all about forgiveness? Didn't we just say the cross is about reconciliation and love? Now look at that. I didn't say this. Jesus said this. Look at the yellow highlighted part on your monitor. You can never have forgiveness if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. You're guilty of an eternal sin. Uh-oh. What does it mean to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Why is this such a serious thing? Why is Jesus drawing the line right there and saying, if you cross this line, you'll never come back? Because blaspheming the Holy Spirit is when you mock the Spirit of God, when you insult the Spirit of God, when you say, I don't want the Spirit of God, I want nothing to do with the Spirit of God. That's called blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And that is a very serious sin, according to Jesus. And think of the theological ramifications here. We know that God is love, God is warmth, God is light, God is grace. If you say to God, I don't want any of your spirit, you're saying, I don't want your love, I don't want your light, I don't want your warmth, I don't want your grace. You realize how serious that is when somebody says that? If God is offering a place in heaven and somebody says, I don't want it, what are they choosing? They're choosing darkness, isolation. They're choosing to be alone and away from God, period. It's a choice. 
And if half the people in this world knew what they were saying when they reject God's Spirit, what are they thinking? People are saying, I don't want the Spirit of God. And then Jesus says, okay, if you don't want the Spirit of God, then you won't get it. And you won't live forever after you die. And you'll be in darkness and in the cold like a dungeon for the rest of eternity. Is this really what people want? Of course not. But there's where Jesus is drawing the line. He says, I'll forgive anything except blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Again, this isn't my interpretation. It's right there, right out of the Scriptures. Now, some of our Christian friends categorize different kinds of sin. Did you know that? We Lutherans don't do that. We don't put certain sins in one category and other sins in another. I'll give you an example. Our Catholic brothers and sisters say that there are mortal sins and there are venial sins. Now, I don't want to offend anybody, and I'm not bashing the Catholics, but I'm just telling you what the Catholics believe. The Catholics believe that there are mortal sins, and I'm getting this right out of Catholic doctrine. It says, a mortal sin is a gravely sinful act which can lead to damnation if a person does not repent of the sin before death. These sins are deliberate, they are not accidental, and they are not coincidental. Catholics call these mortal sins. So you might be wondering, okay, how do, they, how do they define a mortal sin? Give me an example. And they do. These are mortal sins. Listen, anger is a mortal sin. We're all in trouble with that one. Especially going down Route 15 south from Sparta to here. <laughs> anger is a mortal sin. Then they say, Blasphemy is a mortal sin, especially against the Holy Spirit. We just talked about it. They also say that envy is a mortal sin. Hatred is a mortal sin. Neglect of Sunday obligation. That means when you don't go to church, the Catholics say that's a mortal sin. Uh, here's another one. Indifference toward charity. So when you see that a group needs your help or the poor need your assistance and when you're indifferent to them, the Catholics call that a mortal sin. And here's another one, ingratitude. When you're not grateful for anything, when you don't count your blessings, when you take everything for granted, that's a mortal sin. And again, I remind you, their definition of a mortal sin is if you don't confess these sins before you die, you're in deep yogurt with God. You're in trouble. Big trouble. And then they have venial sins. Now, venial sins are like second-degree sins. They're not as serious as the first one. They define venial sin, any sin which leads to the weakening of a person's relationship with God. It's a venial sin. Example, you tell a white lie whatever that is. That's a venial sin. They also say that eating meat on Good Friday is a venial sin. Failure to pray, entertaining doubts in your mind, and failing to learn the teachings of the church. Those are all venial sins. Now, the one that jumps out at me is the one that says eating meat on Good Friday. That's a no-no in the Catholic Church. We, we don't prescribe that. We don't subscribe to that view. But I got to thinking the other day, what are the things that God is really concerned about these days? I think God is concerned about the conflict between Israel and Hamas. I think God is really concerned about what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Do you think God really cares whether you have a hot dog on Friday? I'm serious. You think God is up there going, oh, I can handle Israel and Hamas, but you had a hot dog on Friday, shame on you. You're in deep trouble. I don't believe that. I believe God has more important things to watch over. But still, you've got to admire 
our Catholic brothers and sisters because they take this stuff seriously, don't they? They take it seriously. You know, I got to thinking about repentance. What does repentance really mean? The Greek word is metanoia. You know what that literally means? A turning of the mind. You go from one sinful way of thinking, but you reverse that. That's called a metanoia, a changing of the mind. That's what the prodigal son did when he confessed his foolish ways. So here's the thing. Are sins forgivable? Absolutely, positively, 100%. The Bible says that when you confess your sins, you will receive forgiveness, even when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But you turn around and you say, God, I'm very sorry. I want to be forgiven. Now, what does the New Testament say? In 1 John 1, it says, If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just, God will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's a promise. God forgives the repentant sinner. How about Romans 3? Love this one. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, but we are justified freely. That means we are restored we are renewed, we are reconciled by God's love and grace. The New Testament reminds us that God craves communion with us. God wants us to be in fellowship. God wants us to repent of our sinful ways and be restored in good favor with God. And again, I remind you of what Jesus said. Jesus said, I have come to save the sinners, not to condemn them. God is love. God is mercy. And when we confess our sins, we are promised to receive forgiveness. Look at what it says in the book of Joel. It says, Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Does this sound like a God who wants to condemn anybody? No. God wants to save everybody. And God is offering the Spirit to everybody. And God is offering reconciliation. And God knows we all make mistakes. But God is saying, I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to rescue you. And all we have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I was foolish. Lord, I want to amend my ways. And God says, you are forgiven. That's how much he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die for your sins and mine. I heard about a couple renewing their vows for their 50th wedding anniversary. They stood up at the altar, and the, the husband, after 50 years of marriage, he said, I've memorized my vows. I want to speak directly to my wife during the ceremony. And the husband said to his wife on their 50th anniversary, he said, I love you dearly. When you close your eyes at night, the stars shine on your face. And when you open your eyes in the morning, I see the light of God in your face. I am madly in love with you, and I will love you forever. You know what Jesus says to you? You know what Jesus says to you? He says, I love you dearly, and when you close your eyes at night, I see the stars sparkling on your face. And Jesus says, when you open your eyes in the morning, I see the dawn of a bright new day. Jesus says to you, I am madly in love with you, and I will love you forever. That's the God we worship. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.